what you're looking at right now is a Ultimate Converter Concepts nine and a half inch Spragless Nitrous Converter. Funny, a half inch extension works wonderful. Yeah. Turn this thing out by her. That's close. It hasn't slid all the way to the plate yet. There it is. It's time for the Torque Converter Tip of the Day. What you're looking at right now is a Ultimate Converter Concepts 9.5 inch Spragless Nitrous Converter. Um, I see a lot of this stuff on the internet because, you know, in trying to figure out what we were doing with it, I did a lot of research and there wasn't a whole lot of pictures and a lot of people talking about um, clearancing your converter for the flex plate. Um, there's a couple of things up in here that you should be really cognizant of. Number one, if you look past the flywheel bolts, you'll see a, uh, a snout, and the snout goes into the back of the tramp or goes into the back of the crank, and that has to have, according to at least three different converter companies I talked to, 80 to 100 thousandths that has to go into the back of your crankshaft. Now, what that does is it aligns the converter and the crank, crankshaft center line. So when you put it together, the crank spinning at 7,000 RPM, this flex plate spinning at 7,000 RPM, and this is spinning at 7,000 RPM, and you do not want an out of balance situation. All right? The second thing you should look for is, you see this big old gap right here? All right? Um, this is actually okay, as long as you have enough snout going into the back of your crankshaft. Now when you set these, converters in here they'll use what are called shims that's a converter shim that's about a half of an inch of converter shim right there now how do you dictate how much shim that you need well the converter is all the way back into the trans right now it's as far back as it'll go what you want to do is take a pry bar or whatever you can get up in here and you just want to nudge that converter out of the trans about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch, right? You do not want the converter to bottom out into the trans. Number one, you'll destroy the pump in here because every time, you have to think the crankshaft in this car is not fixed. I mean, it does move back and forth a couple of thousandths of an inch. Well, if that converter slammed all the way back into the trans and it has nowhere to go when that crankshaft tries to go back, it's gonna either push the converter back into the transmission and destroy the pump or worst case scenario, there's pre there's pressure on it pointing this way and it'll actually eat the thrust bearing out of the inside of the engine. All right? So you want 3 16 to an eighth of an inch of play in the converter when you do that. This was measured out prior to this. These are half inch. These shims will go right here between the flex plate. Get my finger out of the way. Between the flex plate and the converter. So to figure that out, you can use washers, you can use metal shims, it really doesn't matter. As long as they're all the same material and basically the same weight, um, you can use whatever you need to do this. Some of these, you only need like maybe one washer to shim them. Some of them you need a whole bunch of washers. Some of them you need a half of an inch of spacer. It all depends on who made the bell housing, who made the block, who made the converter, and how it all bolts together. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, I have the, I've pretty much measured it out. That the space I need taken up by the shims is going to be about that much. So I already know that when I bolt the converter to the back of the flex plate, it's going to have at least an eighth inch pull out on the pump, which is what you want. And uh, that's it. So we've run into a small issue installing the torque converter. Uh, it looks like 
ultimate torque converter only sent us three shims. There's four mounting points. What's that do, Bri? <laughs> that means we gotta go to the store. Mm. <laughs> shimmy shimmy. Shim shim true. So. For those of you who like to use pry bars, there's an easier way. <laughs> that flywheel turner, hell yeah. Uh, we can go back. There's only one spot that he can get the bolts in, so he's got to be very precise. So that flywheel turner is the sweet ticket. Yeah, if you look on this side of the bell housing, there's no room because that's where your starter bolt's in. Checking the bolt clearance to the block. All right, so we got the transmission in. Got the drive shaft hooked up. Everything's coming together. Or is it? I got this side of header put in. We're starting to put this side in. And then... Flail, fuck! So, uh, as you can see, uh, it's back on the ground. But uh, this thing is kind of doing what... I don't know if you watched that live with my brother's move, but uh, this is starting to turn a little bit into that. Not as bad, but... Uh, so, uh, are we ready to start it? No. And what might be the cause? So when you call Jags up to um, order a flywheel for a car, and uh, you don't give them parameters, specifically like what bell housing you're gonna use, they just send you a flywheel, actually a flex plate. Well, the flex plate that's in the car right now is wrong. And the only reason I know it's wrong is because the starter wouldn't line up right, so I called Jegs back, and after I called them and ordered it, the guy gets on the phone a month later and goes, yeah, that flex plate's wrong. Penis. Well, no shit. Why did you sell it to me? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to order a two-day air, a new flex plate. The new flex plate will be here on Wednesday. The trans is basically ready to fall out of the car. So on Wednesday night, I'll pull the car out forward again, drop the trans real quick, throw the flex plate in it, throw the trans back in it, and then put the header in the other side, and then it should be ready to start. So, for all you out there in the internet land, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed for sure. I mean, once again, love seeing this thing sit on the ground, but it's just so sad because we were getting ready close, right close here, to starting this beast. But man, I appreciate everybody who's watching this series, and yes, Jarhead will make a return. You're gonna hear noises race car noise is coming out of this thing real soon so wednesday we get the flex plate we'll get back to working on this thing and filming hopefully have this thing started by the weekend fingers crossed pray to them gods of uh, everything that's horsepower related that everything goes well from there so thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one